Crofton, how are you doing tonight? I am already digging the mood lighting. This is great. I love the blue backdrop here. How's it, everybody happy tonight? I know why you're happy. We finally have a full Supreme Court. Yay! Yeah, Kavanaugh. Great guy, right? Very even-tempered, calm, perfect guy for the Supreme Court. God, did you guys watch those hearings? Have you ever seen a guy try and prove he's not an asshole by being an even bigger asshole? It's like they talk so much about his time in high school, he morphed into the bully from every 80s teen movie. Why are you hitting yourself, Senator? Fuck. And who do you think he was kidding? Trying to, trying to say Devil's Triangle is a drinking game. They're white U.S. male senators. They know what every sex act is called. Okay? They're the biggest sexual deviants in D.C. But, uh, did you guys have a productive day today? Yeah, I did not. It was fantastic. I didn't go to work. Instead, I stayed home and I uh, binge-watched my favorite TV show, Beyond Scared Straight. You guys know that show? If you don't, it's uh, where they take children to prison to try and scare them to not to becoming crim uh, career criminals. My favorite part about that show is they always have one convict that looks badass and talks badass and acts badass, but his crime doesn't really match. You know? He's always like, My name is Scarab Lou! I'm the baddest motherfucker in here! You mess me, I'll make you my bitch! And then the caption will read, Stab one's doing 14 months for tax fraud. <laughs> Real G's don't declare cash tips. But, I don't know. I, I consider that show a microcosm of just the world today, you know? It's just crazy out there. Like Trump and the NRA want to give guns to teachers. Yeah, they want to give guns to underpaid, overworked, underappreciated county employees in order to prevent school shootings. Does anyone like me, when you first heard that, you tried to think of what teacher you had in school would have been the most likely to shoot you? For me, it would have been my seventh grade PE teacher, no doubt. There's no way that man watching me try to do a sit-up would not have pushed him over the edge. One sit-up! One... One... Sit-up! Next thing you know, I got my own page in the yearbook. <laughs> yeah, it's rough in middle school, man. It's rough. Are there any Trump supporters here? Yeah. Yeah, one? Who's, who said yes? Who said yes? You? you? You said yes? Yeah, we had you pegged when we walked in. That's fine. <laughs> kind of figured that one. I mean, you know, we had to get elected somehow. Uh, I am not a Trump supporter. I'll be honest, I'm not a Trump supporter. Although he and I do have something in common. Uh, we're both 6'3", 230 pounds. We both got rock hard bods. Yeah, he can fucking say it, so can I, okay? You know? So a little bit about me. Um, I'm amazing at eating pussy. Um, of course I am. Anything with the word eat in it, you know I'm gonna be your expert. It's just how that works. You know? Am I the fattest comic you guys have ever seen? Yes? No? No? Yes? That sucks. I'm trying to be special up here. I do all the open mics at Golden Corral. Fried shrimp is a big part of my comedy game. I used to be a lot bigger. I used to weigh like well over 500 pounds. And I tried, this is like five, six years ago, and I tried doing stand-up then, because, it, but it didn't really work out. Because I would write material, but I never get to use it. Because what would happen is they call me to the stage, and the only thing I would have would be. <laughs> Why was the stage so far away? Are you going to finish eating that? <laughs> and then I'd say goodnight because I'd use up all my time. Um, 
But to date, I've lost about 200 pounds. Thank you, thank you. I've lost enough that I feel comfortable telling people I'm not fat, I'm just short for my weight. It also qualifies me to be a trainer of Planet Fitness. If you've been to Planet Fitness, you know exactly what I'm talking about, all right? And, and there have been some advantages to losing weight, as you can imagine. I found my dick. Yeah, applaud that, that was a special moment. Yeah. It was right where I'd last seen it, which helped. Uh, basically, my dick went from a theoretical concept to a really disappointing reality. I guess nothing grows in the shade. Good luck getting that image out of your heads tonight. Uh, uh, it's sad. And uh, my friends want me to continue to lose weight. They want me to get that gastric bypass surgery, but I'm refusing to do it. Um, not that I'm afraid to have the surgery, I'm refusing to do it because of the Reverend Al Sharpton. Because he had that surgery and he no longer looks human, okay? His body is like this thin, but his head is still this fucking big. He looks like a human pest dispenser. You pull on the back of his head, Nick Candy comes out of his neck. And, you know, I mean, the rough parts about being my size is you get trolled a lot. You get picked on, obviously. Um, I recently got trolled on Facebook. And it was really bad, but what made it, wor made it worse was what the guy wrote was so brilliant, I really couldn't respond back to it. Like, I almost had to admire him. Um, I'll tell you guys what, the guy, what, the, what he wrote, because, again, and I want to get accurate, because when you, when you see genius, you want to acknowledge it. Um, what he wrote was, that dude big as fuck. Yeah, he's clearly a poet. Um, he had the iambic pentameter working. But, you know, here's the thing. I've been a big guy my entire life. I've been picked on for being a big guy my entire life. So, growing up, my defense mechanism was, I picked on myself as much as possible, and I got good at it. You know, that's why people laugh at what I say, because I pick on myself, and I don't have a problem with it. So, anybody can troll me or mock me on social media, I don't give a fuck, because you're never going to do it as well as me. You know what I'm saying? You're never going to fucking do it as better than me. You know what I'm saying? Let me hear you guys know what I'm saying? Yeah! And the only side effect of that has been crippling depression. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, it's been great. And, it's easy, and you know, it's easy to be depressed right now. The world is a bit depressing. Racism. It's always been out there, but now thanks to social media, it's just in your face. You can't miss it. It's just there. And what's crazy is we're just seeing these weird acts of racism that make no sense at all. Um, how many of you saw that video of those two guys uh, barbecuing in Oakland, California? You guys remember that video? The woman called the cops on them? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, these two guys, these two black guys, they were just barbecuing next to a lake in Oakland, and the woman called the cops on them. That was stupid. It was pointless. They weren't hurting anybody. I mean, all that video showed me is that I would be a terrible racist. And I don't mean terrible as in a bad person. I would just be really bad as a racist because there's no way my racism would not be trumped by my love of barbecue. You know? I mean, you just go like, what are you guys doing? You can't be doing that shit here. You got a lot of nerve. Are those ribs? Yes, I want one. Do you have potato salad? Preferably made with white potatoes. I don't know. I don't understand racism. I don't understand hating someone for the color of their skin. You know, it makes no sense. You know, that's why I like playing places like this. I love diverse crowds, all, all types. You know? I particularly hate stereotypes. I hate, I, I don't understand, you know, they, stereotypes are just meant to keep people down. They saw a certain race of a certain person of a certain race to a certain thing and then they conveyed it to that entire race in order to keep that, keep that race down. You know? Like, we can all agree that not all Asians are bad drivers, right? Exactly, we all agree. We can all agree 
that not all Latinos are here illegally, right? Right? Whatever that guy said, but you know, we agree. We can agree that not all black guys have big dicks. Right? Right? Please? Is, uh, is that one true? I take it back then, I totally understand why racism exists. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm so very much against it. I am, I'm very much against it. But let's be honest, that dick thing's a game changer. Uh, I mean, I, I see there's a couple black guys here tonight and I, I wanna thank you guys for being humble. No, seriously, cause they could have been like, nope. So thank you, sir. You know, I love doing that joke because uh, every now and again, I'll do that joke and a white woman will be here, she'll be like, they are huge. But there be, if I'm lucky, there's like an elderly black woman here who's like, hmm. don't believe the hype, baby. Don't believe the hype. That's just her way of saying, define big. You're packing less than 10. I ain't interested, you know? Uh, so uh, how much time I got? Am I, am I gonna go? I mean, I'm a, I'm a lot bigger than you. There's no way you're getting me out of this game physically. You can try. One more joke. One more joke. One more joke. Hey, I, I want to tell you guys, um, I recently passed my one year mark as a stand-up comic. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I got into comedy because growing up, com comics were my idols. You know, I grew up idolizing George Carlin and Richard Pryor and Robin Williams and Lenny Bruce. You know, and I think comics are just the bravest people in the world, man. Because we come up on stage and we expose ourselves. We expose all our flaws and our insecurities and everything wrong with us just to bring a little bit of joy to people's lives, just for a couple of minutes. And I think that's one of the bravest fucking things you can do. So to all the comments here, I appreciate the fuck out of you guys, and I hope you all in the audience feel the same way. I feel the same way about strippers. But, but I'm gonna keep my clothes on tonight because uh, I can't do this. I've been Ray Hubel, thank you very much, you guys have been awesome, thank you, have a good night.